of personality. This is interesting. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, just kind of like blobs for the first year. They're, I mean, for the they're, most part. <laughs> they're great to snuggle, but they don't really do that much. And then no. and it becomes super fun when they can walk and, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> all right. Looks like we are live. So I'm going to start with the official intro. Hello out there and welcome to this Loon Dive on Sound of the Loons. I'm senior digital content editor, Steve McPherson, and I'm thrilled to be joined by the newest loon, midfielder Will Trap. If you're watching this uh, on our social media channels and you have a question for Will, uh, just pop it down wherever they let you type comments. We'll see if we can get, get to some of those depending on uh, how many we get and what they are. Um, I'm going to begin with the hard hitting questions. First of all, you have a birthday coming up in 10 days, uh, I believe. Where on the spectrum do you fall from completely insane about your birthday to please don't talk to me about my birthday? It's a good question. Uh, it's very hard hitting. Uh, <laughs> I would say it's it's one where I, if people wish me happy birthday, thank you. I don't need it. I don't really, I mean, I feel like as you get older, you don't want people to ask you or, or wish you happy birthday. So um, I'm middle of the road, I guess you could say for the most part. Okay, that's good. I, I think that sometimes I, I agree when you're younger, there's sort of that sweet spot of birthdays. I think when you're a kid, you don't really know what's going on. You get a little older, you get greedy. But then in sort of like your late teens, early 20s, it's just fun. But yeah. then it's like if you're still holding on to that desire for everybody to pay attention to you, I think, you know, maybe just back off a little bit. Uh, and I, I think that's probably a good move. And, yeah. and you said, as we were talking before, you have a one year old now. So I think that once you have children, their birthday becomes more important. 100%. 100%. <laughs> um, so a little stuff about Minnesota. Uh, you've been here a couple of times to play games. Uh, you played, I looked this up, you played against Minnesota United at TCF Bank back on July 4th in 2017, mm -hmm. which feels forever ago. Cool. You, had the chance to, <laughs> you had the chance to come to Allianz Field uh, in its inaugural season on May 18th. Have you been to Minnesota other than those games? Well, funny enough, my wife's family, like, almost all of them are from the Twin Cities. So oh, okay. uh, yeah, so Hudson, Wisconsin, and then the Twin Cities. So we've been up a couple times. Uh, she comes up certainly more than I have, but um, but we love the cities. I mean, amazing. The national team played there last year as well in the Gold Cup, and I was there for that. So oh, yeah. had a really, really enjoyable experience so far. Um, and the stadium is unbelievable. Uh, that July 4th game, funny enough, you bring it up, I remember it just being like the hottest day ever. Uh, yes. on that turf and it was a I mean I think we won Columbus won 1-0 um, yeah. but then coming back um, May 18th of last year was what are well I guess 2019 oh my gosh it's 2021 uh, I just forget oh. that 2020 happened with <laughs> uh, exactly last year um, and what a stadium I mean the inaugural season what a place so it was a, a special environment for sure so looking forward to getting into Allianz Field as your as your home stadium then this year, I presume. Absolutely. Absolutely. Can't wait. Um, good memories. Tons of excitement. I mean, we just hope that fans can be in the stadium and we can all enjoy it together, right? Yeah, I'm hoping that comes true at least partway through the season. We'll just have to see as things evolve. Yeah. We're still sort of in who knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, man. So having, uh, you know, family who are from, from this area and stuff like that, that's yet another connection you then have with Ethan Finlay because he's mm -hmm. you know, also grew up in this area and sort of came home for that. Um, so tell me a little bit about that, that connection with him. You played with him for, for quite a, a lot of your career in Columbus. Yeah, so, I mean, Ethan was – he signed in Columbus the year before I signed, um, but got to watch him before I was even a player with Columbus and then obviously got to – grow a great relationship on and off the field with them. Amazing person, great player, um, and has done great things in this league for a long time. And for me, it's a huge um, just point of confidence, point of comfort to have a guy like Ethan, who's not only someone you know, but he's a friend, right? And, and stepping into a new place is always important to have that network of people. And, and Ethan, I mean, he's, he's, he made a name for himself in Columbus and has done so up there. And it's, um, it's exciting to now reunite with him. Yeah, that uh, the relationship, you know, I watched some highlights. I was looking back at 2015, you know, sure. at, at the Columbus highlights, particularly a, a long, you know, a long sort of forward diagonal pass from you to Ethan for a great goal was up on there. Um, tell me a little bit about that connection on the field, like in terms of your role, uh, you know, in your defensive midfield role and connecting sort of the two parts of the field a little bit and how you view that. Yeah, I mean, uh, for those that don't know kind of what I'm about as a player, it's, it's certainly about connection and linking the field um taking the ball from the back half of the team and providing guys like Ethan like Reynoso like um 
Robin Lud or, or Molino um, opportunities to now do what they do best. Right. So um, that's, that's really something that in Columbus, Ethan and I forged a great relationship doing. Um, and, and now I understand him obviously extremely well from that period and being able to unlock what he does well. Right. Um, so for me, it's, it's really now not only taking what I know with Ethan, but now learning the rest of the group of guys and, and kind of putting them in positions to be successful. Yeah. So, um, and some of that came with, you know, you, you, you were uh, the captain in, in Columbus. Um, you've also captained with the USMNT at times in terms of that role. Um, like, what do you see the role of the captain as being? I mean, I'm not presuming about who gets to be captain or anything like that. Sure, Obviously sure. it's way, it's way earlier, but just in terms of what you've learned in your career over taking on that role and what that role has to bring to the team. Yeah. I mean, I think so much of being a captain or being a leader is, is understanding your, your group and understanding your, your teammates. Um, and, and for me in Columbus, uh, it was, it was very much kind of a lead by example type of thing. Um, I, I've never been like the boisterous alpha males type of leader in that regard. Sure. You hold people accountable when you need, but I really try to lead through example. Um, and in doing that, bringing guys up and, and taking them with you versus trying to chastise so much. Um, I, I find that, if you can get everybody doing what they do best um, and firing on all cylinders and you can kind of facilitate those situations happening, then everyone enjoys what they're doing because they are doing what they love, but also the team's probably winning. So um, that's a, that's a big part of, of how I've tried to address it. Um, and look, everyone has their own style, but that's mine. Yeah, I mean, it seems it seems like a good fit having seen, you know, the last couple of seasons, Ozzy Alonso captaining and then in his absence, Michael Box all sort of stepped up into that yeah. role. Yeah, Michael and did both, a great job. And yeah, both those guys sort of, I think, take that approach of, you know, with their play, they show who they are and then they support they support the team. And that's, that's kind of the vibe. So it seems like that that'll be a, that'll be a good fit for you. Is that one of the things that is sort of attracted you to the idea of coming to Minnesota? I mean, there's numerous things. Uh, I think you always want to go where you're wanted. Right. Um, and, and Adrian and Mark Watson, they were both very adamant throughout the entire season of 2020. Um, while I was still a Miami player of, of kind of wondering what will situation was at the end of the year. So, um, I think they put their best foot forward showing that they had interest in me. Um, and, and ultimately I feel like that's, that's what you want as a player. You want to go where you're wanted. You want to go where they have a plan for you. Uh, and, and this is a situation which ticked every single box for us and add on the fact that we have family there, it, it really made a ton of sense. Um, but from a, a style of play perspective, look, as a, as a player during the season, you're kind of focused on, especially in 2020, it's focused as much as you can on what you're doing. But once I had the idea of Minnesota uh, in my mind, it was great because we had the Sporting Kansas City um, playoff game and then we had the... Um, Oh, I guess it was Seattle right after that, but um, the performances were incredible and, and seeing the way the team was playing, the focus, the attentiveness and the lethalness to be, to be honest. Um, and then you see a guy like Reynoso, who of course everybody wants to play with. Uh, <laughs> I, I saw myself like, wow, okay, this is even better than what I thought. Um, because look, Miami this year was a, it was a difficult, difficult, difficult run of being an expansion team and yeah. um, to be wanted by a team that to be honest was four or five minutes away from, playing MLS cup, which would have been fantastic because they would have played Columbus and hopefully be Columbus, but whatever, <laughs> we won't go there. That'll be for 2021. Um, right. <laughs> but uh, no, it was so exciting. So we, we got gassed up as it was going on following the, the playoff run, um, like real loon fans from our house here in Florida. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about, about your experience this past season. I mean, you were, so you're a Midwestern guy, born in Columbus, raised yep. in Columbus, came up through their Academy, spent those seven seasons with the crew, you know, mm -hmm. and then you go to Miami, you know, sort of a new, a new spot. It's an expansion team. And then 2020 was 2020. And so almost yeah. immediately you're thrown into a situation where you're in a new place, but you can't really go out and see it or sort of get the vibe of it. I mean, it's a sort of a hard thing to get your arms around, but, but what has the last year been like just, you know, for you with an expansion side, a new place, but also having to deal with, you know, with the things we've all dealt with as far as the pandemic. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, we all have our stories from 2020 and a one-year-old and you were, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, okay. I'll start there because having yeah. a one-year-old during quarantine, I mean, and thank God, like I, I truly will say, thank God for, for the league and, I mean, we were still being paid. So I know a lot of people struggled with that. I have people in my family that weren't quite as lucky. So to have not only that part covered, but then to have the time with my son was 
you just don't get that, especially within the first year. So we were super, super blessed with that. But um, expansion is tough. And you guys know that up there, right? Yep. <laughs> it's, it's tough. Um, and then you throw in the pandemic, you throw in just honestly, not having the time to build a group really. Um, and some teams do it better than others. I mean, you look at Nashville, ultimately they, they turned it around and did a great job and, and made a good run into the playoffs. But um, I think we, we struggled with that quite a, quite a bit. Um, for me, I've always been, you know, like a South, a South beach guy, you know, from Columbus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> um, so it's uh it was definitely an adjustment culturally, but it's a beautiful place. I mean, there's so much culture. I mean, amazing things. Unfortunately, we didn't get to really dive in as much as we had wanted, but um, we met awesome people and the club did a great job of bringing us in, in a first year, and adapting. I mean, truly, it was a year of adapting for everyone. And um, I, I have no ill will or any regard towards what Miami did and, and who they are as a, as a club. Yeah. And I'm sure it's just, I mean, it's another learning experience, you know, one of those Absolutely. something different to be on expansion side, you know, that's it gives yeah. you, I mean, I, I joined Minnesota United. I, I, I took the job the, right before the first expansion season. And man, it was, uh, it was, it was tough. Um, but you, yeah. learn a lot. you learn a lot in the experience. So. Well, and, and so much of it, sorry, if, if I elaborate a little more, but Please. so much of it is just having the, the vision in place, right? And trusting the vision and, and chipping away at it. I think during the, the playoff run, I remember uh, maybe it was Adrian or someone was just speaking about how this four-year plan or three-year, four-year plan has kind of taken shape. And, and truly, it, it's now you're buying for MLS Cups, which in your first year, you're like, we've lost the most games of any team, you know, it's, right. it's, it's crazy how this league is, but the more you can um, kind of have that vision and be chipping away, chipping away um, from a longevity perspective, things take shape. Um, and, and I think that was another part of what attracted us to Minnesota is it's not the glitz and glamor, but it wins, you know, and it's, yeah. it's stable and there's a foundation and um, there's something to, I mean, for me, that's a Midwestern thing that I love and respect and really, um, and gravitated towards. Yeah. So, um, off the pitch again, you know, obviously you probably had a lot, you had a lot of downtime in 2020. Um, you know, and you, as you said, you know, spending time with your son, which again, that's tremendously valuable. I remember talking to Ethan about when he was getting married and how every MLS guy like schedules their wedding for that. Oh, December baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So, so like, you know, for to have your child born and then have the chance to sort of spend time with him is, is tremendous. But beyond that, beyond the dad duties and things like that, you know, we, I think we all spent a lot of time on our Netflix queues this past year. What what kind of stuff do you get up to? I mean, either in quarantine or just generally when you're not, you know, out there training or, or playing games. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's changed a little bit just given our son, but um, he goes, he sleeps like an absolute champ. He sleeps mm -hmm. amazing. So we, yeah. That's like, huge, he, that's huge. He's down at 7, 7.30. <laughs> so my wife and I have two and a half hours each night. So um, we're, we like red wine. So we, we, became connoisseurs a little bit this year. <laughs> um, we love to cook. Honestly, I'm a big, big fan of cooking, whether it's grilling, whether it's just trying new recipes. And I think that was a fun creative outlet for us this year. Um, let me think. I mean, here we honestly, we take walks, like we just go outside and like to converse and meet the neighbors. And um, thankfully we had an awesome neighborhood here of people that social distance wise were, mm -hmm. were up with it. Um, and ultimately, man, I mean, I think, you learn that your priorities shift and you're tired after a long day of training and you just kind of want to like hang out, but you want to hang out with your people. And that's kind of how I am. Um, I've adapted and fully melded into dad mode, like so easily. It's almost scary. Um, <laughs> but really like just entertaining friends, entertaining teammates, cooking out for them. Um, it has been like this year, what we've found, because look, we're in Columbus. That's home. We're surrounded by family. So this sure. is the first time, the first time we like, had to step out of our comfort zone. And I think it was really fun for, for the three of us to, to just know that we can rely on each other and survive, you know? Yeah. Um, so it was, uh, it was a great experience and we're pretty mellow. Yeah. Yeah. As far as the cooking was also, I definitely got much more into cooking this, this oh, year. Yeah. It's, been, it's been great, but uh, like, what's your, what's your, what's your go-to? Like what's, what's something that you feel confident you're like, I can whip this up and it'll be good. Well, so what I, this year I kind of like, I made a point. We went to a, a cousin's house and he made ribs. And I was like, I've never made ribs in my life. I'm like, so I just don't know. I don't even know where to begin. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not going to sit there and smoke for 
eight to 12 hours. Like sure. it's just not my, so I found this incredible recipe and that's like, whenever people come visit, I make my ribs and they're fire. They really are good. <laughs> like, um, every time we eat it, we're like, this is the best one. And we, she looks at me, she's like, we said that last time. Every time it's the same. <laughs> um, but it's a, it's a pretty much foolproof recipe, but they're so good. They're yeah. so good. Yeah, that's good. It's it's an amazing feeling when you go from, you know, I think my post-college time was like survival cooking and it was like pasta and just, you know, n- not anything great to then yeah. now over the past couple of years, really getting to the point where I try something and I'm like, I w- like, I wouldn't even go to a restaurant to get like this. I can just eat, make no, this for sure. Amazing, for so. sure. For sure. Do you make your own barbecue sauce for the, for the ribs or what's your, what's your, approach? we're not at that level. We're not at okay. that level yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, not there yet. Uh, that's a good idea though. I'll be curious. We could try that. There's some Evolution. recipes out there's some recipes out there. You know, like it's good to go to Kansas City. I've gone to a lot of barbecue places in Kansas City. Um yeah. and I actually got a smoker this year. I got a I got a, a oh, smoker. Nice. So I've been getting into some of that stuff. Although I haven't done ribs yet. I've done pork, pork shoulder, whole chickens, whole chickens roasted are, are amazing. So, nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I'm I might venture into the smoker. I think it's just dipping the toe in and then I'll yeah. you know, see. We'll see. It's good. It's good. I got to recommend. I, I thought it was going to be difficult. I got one of these pellet ones. It's yeah. like you almost can't mess it up. Um, it's, it's fantastic. So that's good to know. It's good to know. <laughs> and as far as the red wine, um, you know, the, uh, Adrian Heath is also a, a, a wine connoisseur. So maybe you okay. guys can, can connect on, on, on that tip, but do you have any, what, what's your favorite? Are you dry, sweet, like regions, countries, things you you like? Yeah. So we've, we've been fortunate. Um, our anniversary, like every MLS player is in December. So <laughs> off season, uh, we went to, we went to Italy one year and we did, um, just like Tuscany and beautiful, obviously beautiful, but beautiful wines as well. Um, so like super Tuscans are more fun. And like we drink a lot of Chianti, but Chianti can be, a, you know, sure. it's only, there's only so much, um, we love, we went to Napa Valley one, one time and we love that. I mean, Cabernet is probably what we drink the most. Um, and it's just easy. Not Na- like Napa cabs are, there's a reason why it's, they're so good. Um, yeah. and then one year we went to, um, we went to Cape Town, South Africa and Stellenbosch is a huge wine region down there. Mm-hmm. Um, with some, with some really interesting types of wine, but usually we go red wine, um, and cab cabs from the Sonoma Napa Valley area. Yeah, I, I really like Malbecs. I discovered the the oh uh, nice, which which are which are quite good. I can yeah. sometimes a little heavy, but you know, sure. like it, it sort of depends on depends on the weather, right? You know. Yeah, true, true. Rainy season, of, not rainy season. Right. There's a lot of red <laughs> wine time in Minnesota. We have it's really there's yeah. not a huge white wine um, sort of time of the year. So well, I will say that we. I mean, it's just so hot down here. It's funny. We're going like straight up polar opposites. Like six months out of the year here, it's so hot you can't be outside. Right. Six months, seven months, eight months, maybe in Minnesota. It's so cold. People go outside, but it's so cold. Yeah. Um, so we definitely did more white wine down here, but nothing crazy. We're just kind of testing, testing the waters. Yeah. And are you, are you a warm weather guy or a cold weather guy? I mean, you grew up in the Midwest, but are you just adaptable? Honestly? Yeah. It doesn't really matter to us. Um, I, I don't like how hot it is here. Okay. I'll, I'll be honest. Like it, the people don't really, they don't realize like we're sitting, you don't see your neighbors for six, seven months. Like sure. it's just so hot. Um, and you, you quickly realize like, well, this is a swamp. Like they just basically <laughs> like took all the water out of a swamp and then people live here. Like, why do you live here? Um, but now I will say it's unfortunate because right now it is beautiful. It right. is as nice of weather I've ever seen. Um, so that's it's just one of those things but we we certainly I mean, grew up in columbus it's it's midwestern it's cold in the winter it's hot in the summers and you get a nice fall i mean that's the biggest thing we missed this year was fall yeah um fall is as good as it gets you get that those crisp mornings football i mean it's just nice yeah i mean it's a beautiful it's a sunny slightly moist like mid-20s right now outside it's it's it's, it's gorgeous it's perfect weather you know, yeah. for not going outside, but it's, it's, it's not too snowy or anything right now. So it's okay. So, well, on Christmas day, my, my wife's my, my brother-in-law sent us a photo. It was like, it was cold, I believe. Yes. It was pretty cold. 
and yep. he went running in shorts. And I was like, yeah, it sounds <laughs> okay. That's about Minnesota speed. Yeah. It got really cold on Christmas. It was nuts. It was like single degrees. And so, you know, yeah, yeah. It was, it was too bad. I got my kids bikes uh, for Christmas. Oh, and they, bummer. Like, yeah. Like up until three days before Christmas, it had sort of been like mid thirties. It was like, you could even go out there hadn't been snow. And then it was like snowstorm and mm. single digits. So yeah. now they're in the shed. They'll get pulled out when it gets nice. Basements. Hey, by the way, basements looking forward to a basement again That's there's no sure. basements in Florida, right no no none of that it's just sand I'm, down there i'm in my basement right now and it's great so oh can't wait <laughs> well will thanks so much for joining us here on uh sound of loons looking forward to uh more from you coming up you know when the season gets gets rolling it'll be good to you know hopefully we can meet some people in in, in person and uh, i sure. know the fans are excited for it so uh you know enjoy, enjoy your time off and we're looking forward to it all right man happy new year steve all thanks right. thanks a lot well